Okay, this this video is, an on, is on an advanced uh, wheel assembly for cars, trucks, whatever. You have your normal wheel, like so, and here's the deal. The idea for this is that there are different ways to do different the, the same thing. Now, the way we have vehicles set up right now for movement basically is the engine uh, spins and forget how the, the power is transferred from here to the wheel, it just basically in the nutshell version is they've got a way to transfer the fact that uh, the engine spins faster and faster they've come up with a way that as that happens this wheel on your car spins faster and faster or wheels on your car spin faster and faster. Now there are four wheels on a car um, the ones really that are that uh, the ones that would actually be used for the uh, power are the ones I want to deal with and expandable wheel assembly. The same way in which we use right currently right now gears so that um, basically gears are nothing more than like first gear as the engine is spinning the wheel spins so many times for every time the uh, engine spins. Well, from first gear to second gear, all that means is that, you know, in second gear, as the engine is spinning so many times, the wheel is going to spin more times than it did in first gear for each time the engine spin, spun, however you say it, than in the first gear. And in third gear, the same thing. It's going to spin this power, the, the tire that actually propels the car, it's going to spin even more times than in second or third gear for every time the engine spins, or RPMs. Basically what we have is a rotation of the tire, and we have RPMs of the engine. There's a ratio of the tire spinning to the rotations per minute. Okay, so the ratio of tire spinning to RPMs is what we're dealing with when you change gears. What I want to deal with is, like a lot of people today, because the gas prices are so high, and make sure we're centered on this and stuff. Okay, we are. <coughs> They're putting on bigger wheels. They know you put a bigger wheel on here than for every time the engine is, wants to spin, and of course it's connected to the, the, the driving wheel, that you're covering a longer distance each time uh, the RPMs are increasing. You're increasing overall exponentially more distance as you go through the RPMs because the faster the engine turns, the faster this wheel turns. So if you use a larger wheel, you're covering more distance with a larger wheel than you did with the smaller wheel as the engine is turning, which equates into or translates into better gas mileage, uh, possibly higher speeds, things like that. Now, I can do something similar to what you guys do with changing gears by making this wheel become larger while you're going through the RPMs. If we can set up an assembly next to, or and this is where I need the experts to do this, or maybe somebody might do it within the wheel itself and have a framework on the on the side of it, so it's almost like a flat panel, and then a bubble will actually expand, and th the tire will actually expand out from here out to here as the RPMs are increasing. <coughs> That's one way to do it. Another way is like, you know, simply that uh, in first gear, when you get to a certain RPM, instead of accelerating any further and pressing on the pedal any farther, what you do is you can have it electronically when it hits a certain RPM in first gear, it starts, the wheel starts expanding and getting bigger and bigger. So you're increasing speed that way instead of having to use more, use more gas. Then, after you've expanded the wheel all the way in first gear, and gotten a heck of a lot more speed and, and uh, miles out of it, then you shift into second gear, and then into third, and then the fourth, and then the fifth, and whatever. So uh, a couple of benefits of this. Um, when you go to brake, if you can have it contracting while you're braking, a smaller wheel is going to brake more easily than a larger wheel. You're shortening the distance that you're traveling while you're braking, making it easier to brake. So that's one of the benefits of a, an, not only just an expandable wheel, but also while it's contracting, it has a benefit while you're braking. So you're expanding while you're speeding up, 
you're contracting while you're braking, and you're making each one of those things more effective, speeding up and slowing down. Now, the only way I can see this really working is on uh, something, I believe it's called a prowler, where the wheel is on the outside. Otherwise, you would have to set up your vehicle so that um, maybe electronically the body would raise up as the wheel is expanding and then lower as it is contracting maybe or maybe you just raise up your vehicle uh, before you start driving and then the wheel can expand and contract freely without worrying about whether it's going to rub the body or anything like that. Uh, you can set it up electronically to coincide with the RPMs in the engine so that it, it, it uh, expands, the wheel expands while the RPMs are increasing and contracts while the um, uh, RPMs are decreasing. The body at the same time would raise up and lower with the movement of the expanding of the tire and contracting. So I need the experts out there to help me uh, make this work. I'm hoping that this could be um, a possibility that we can use this right now, this expanding wheel theory, at the least on the driving wheels the wheels that are actually uh, moved by the transmission. Um, you may want to do it on, on all four wheels just to keep the, the, the vehicle balanced while it's you know raising up and lowering or whatever like that. So at nighttime your lights are going to be going like this because one end, if it's in the back, you know, then it's going to be lowering the lights as it expands the wheels and raising them as it contracts. Or if the drive wheels are in front, then as it, can, as it expands, the, the lights would be going up higher in the air, almost like high beams, and you know, you know the problems there. Uh, so we need, you guys, there are other considerations. I'm fully well aware that once you start changing one thing on a vehicle, domino effect says basically the things around it are going to change, and then those things that are around those things that changed are going to change. So there's possible other considerations that I need the experts out there to help me reconcile and make this work. Again, as I said before, you know, when you make it a necessity, the mother of invention appears. This is a way that which, if you incorporate this into what we already have, along with the gears being used to make the car go faster, as you basically, each higher gear makes this spin more times for the number of times that it, it used the engine would spin. Um, add to that an expanding wheelbase and potentially cars that right now, your car, however fast it goes, you might very possibly be able to almost double your top speed. At least one and a half times, if not twice, the speed you get now out of the same car by using this along with the gears that you already have right now. So we're using two ways to increase your speed and your mileage on your current vehicles, if we can get this to work, and we need to make this work. <laughs> Gas is just, just outrageous. Uh, we need to make this work. Uh, come up with some ideas. Somebody steal this, please. Make your billions of dollars. You know, and as soon as somebody takes this, you're going to be the one who, who gets the money and the credit off of this. Take it, run with it. Make lots of money, please. I'm putting that out there just, and, and you know you can do this. There are people who are you're watching this, and you know you can do this. And you can do it a heck of a lot better explaining it than I can. So go for it. And let's help save everybody some, uh, gas money and let's get some better mileage and uh, higher speeds out on the highway. You know, using this, you get out on the highway, we could be potentially be cruising at 100 instead of 65 at only, you know, 1,500, 2,000 RPMs or something like that, which is very low for RPMs. Who knows? So let's, let, let's see what the economy is of scale are. Let's see what the uh, uh, tire rotation, the, the ratio of tire rotation to RPMs. Let's see if we can get that the most effective. What's the most effective economy is economies of scale, um, so on and so forth. The experts know what that is. So thank you. Please run with it and make it happen.